Hi YouTube, my name is Michael and today let's talk about axes. So over the years I've had several opportunities to try out many different types of axes. I prefer the smaller backpackable axes for my ATV and UTV trips and I've got a selection of them here for you. So over the years I've owned some Grand Force Brux axes, I've owned some Wesseling's axes and I've got rid of some of them and I've kept some of them. So I'll show you what I've currently got with me and let you know my thoughts on them. So the reason I prefer the smaller axes is they are very versatile. I don't really need a large ax. I prefer not to cut wood with an ax when a saw is much more suited to the job. So I prefer to use these for splitting wood and to do some occasional chopping and limbing, stuff like that. So I'm not chopping trees with these. Uh, that will be a completely different thing. So first off, let's start with my favorite ax of all time that I've ever used. And this is the Wetterlings Bushman's ax or the Les Straub Bushman's ax. So this is a very unique type of ax and I've had it for quite some time. Unfortunately, they don't make this anymore, uh, but it's a really, really good ax. It's a good general purpose ax and it has some nice features. It has a nice beard where you can get your hand underneath and use it for choked up work. It has a long enough handle where you can actually use it two-handed very comfortably. You can also use it one-handed. However, I wouldn't recommend it unless you're very skilled. I've added this collar to the shaft just to protect it during splitting. And it does have a nice hammer face on the other side, which is great for driving in temp pegs, etc., or whichever you want to do with it. It does have a nice lanyard hole and I have put a loop in there. Uh, I love having a loop. This is just paracord. But if you do have tough temp pegs, you can literally hook it around, give it a twist, and you can use it to drive out the, uh, the stake. It actually works really well. So I did make a mask for this ax. The one that came with it was not super great. And it's just a basic slip on type made out of some leather that I had spare. Uh, it's not super tight, but it doesn't fall off. And uh, it does have some laser engraving on there. Uh, and same with this, it's just a piece of scrap leather that I had. And you can see where it's been struck a couple of times, so it's doing its job. The ax head is a little loose on this one at the moment because it's been indoors for too long. So if you keep it in a warm house, they will loosen up. I just need to soak this uh, in some liquid and it'll swell back up and it'll be good as normal. The second axe that I have is this Halterford's small splitting axe. Again, I've got a lanyard for pulling temp pegs and also to grab onto. Did make a axe mask for this one too. This is a little bit more secure because uh, the idea was I would carry this on my belt at some time, but that comes off really well. Obviously the profile is different because this is a splitting ax. It does split wood better than the Wetterlings. However, this does split quite well, uh, but this I find takes less energy, the head's heavier, and the profile of the, the ax itself lends itself to easier splitting. And again, the, the size is actually comparable. And you can use this either single-handed for small stuff, where you can actually use it two-handed. And this is actually very good. Haven't had any problems with this at all. The head remains tight, whether it's indoors or outdoors, and it has the circle type of uh, driven in um, wedge to make this very secure indeed. You can still buy these uh, from limited suppliers. So they're a little bit hard to come by. Uh, but the Wetterlings one, you can't buy them anymore. And my last axe that I've been using recently, actually over the last, I'd say six months, I think I picked this up ago, which was a cheaper axe, but I really like this profile. This is a CRKT Freya axe. And I actually picked this up. You can get these from almost anywhere. I picked this one up from Cabela's, but I'm sure Bass Pro and other places have them too. But what drew me to this axe was a very similar profile to this axe, not quite the same. It has a longer beard on it. 
Uh, I could be tempted to actually trim that back slightly uh, because it is a little long uh, for good splitting. So I do have a couple of videos of me using the sax to split, split and process wood and I was actually surprised on how well it actually worked. It is a shorter axe than the other two. However, you still can use two-handed, uh, but you can use it one-handed quite happily. You do have to use a bit more forward speed to use this for splitting, and it does work exceptionally well. My only serious complaint about this axe is the mask that they give you is this stupid rubber thing. That doesn't work. Uh, it doesn't come with a lanyard hole, but I did put one in. So again, with the tent pegs and other things, somewhere to hang it up by. That's uh, very important to have that. And like I say, I may modify this. I may chop this bottom part off because it's a little bit redundant. I don't need the cutting face this long. And with a shorter cutting face, it would actually split better, I think. But let me know what you think in the comments. So my plan today is to actually make a quick axe mask for this because this is obviously no good. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I do that real quickly. So the first thing I'm gonna do is grab a piece of paper. I'm going to draw around the X. So I think I want to come somewhere around here and somewhere around here. So it looks pretty good. And what I'm going to do is allow space for the leather to be stitched. It doesn't have to be super accurate. And for the closure, I'm just gonna do a simple leather fold over. I think something like that. So I don't have to do it twice. I'm just gonna fold over the paper. Grab the only scissors I can find. I want to make that slightly longer. So that's not too bad. I think that's the basis of my template. I think that's gonna work. I think we'll, we'll go with that. So next step is to cut out my leather. For those observant people, I did make a mistake and cut the wrong side of the leather. So I just had to cut out another piece with the right side facing.
Here I'm quickly adding a groove for the stitching to recess into and it just goes around the outside. I'm just using the sewing machine to stitch these two pieces of leather together. If I was doing this with thicker leather, like 10 ounce leather, and I really want it to look very well, then I would hand stitch it. I find machine stitching is okay for quick things, but it's really not as aesthetic as hand stitching and certainly not as strong. So just to know, if this wasn't a prototype and it was the final product, then I would have glued all the edges before stitching and I may have included welt so the sharp edge of the axe doesn't cut through the stitching. A quick go around on the sander will smooth out all those surfaces and I can do my final shaping at this point. Now I've got my final shape I can go around and bevel those edges to make them nice and round and that'll help me when I come to burnish it in a few moments. You can buy special products to help with the burnishing of the edges, but I find some water and this piece of hardwood that I shape for the purpose and just keep rubbing away and dampening, then rub away again and eventually you'll get a nice polished edge. At this point I'm just going to dampen the leather and then do some forming so when the axe goes into the mask it'll leave an impression and it will stay that shape. I'm going to go with a simple popper to retain the axe inside the sheath. However, I never have good luck with these things. Currently I'm using a hammer and a dolly and a shape punch to set them, but it doesn't really work very well and I should upgrade. I did add a paw print later because the leather did look a little bit bland and I finished it off with some Nick wax to protect the surface and to give it a bit of a rustic look. Well that's the finished product. It does look a little bit rustic and uh, I decided not to dye it and just keep it this color. Kind of like it, looks a bit aged. There's a couple of tool marks on there from the sewing machine and one where I hit the rivet. And it's not perfect by any means. I would probably uh, put rivets in these points here. I just went back and double stitched them. But I'm not sure if that would hold, but I'd have to make a, a larger uh, seam for the rivets but still uh, I think it's still workable it's pretty good it's not going to come off anytime soon so all my axes now have masks so keep it nice and safe uh, much better than the 
the one that comes with it, the cheap rubber one, which is pretty pointless. But overall, I think that works out quite well. Uh, this is actually, I would say my second favorite ax with the, the Bushman's ax being my first favorite. Um, but like I say, the, the one that I use most often is probably the uh, Halterfords because it is very practical and I do more splitting of wood than anything else. Uh, but this is a little backpacking axe, lightweight axe. I think it's really good. And for the money, um, I think it's hard to beat. Again, check out my other videos and I'll put links to them. And the great thing is with this particular axe is its availability. Uh, like I say, they do sell them in big box stalls where a lot of the premium axes yeah, mail order only or some specialist outlets. So I think for the money, this is a really good axe. I've actually grown to like it very, very much. So let me know in the comments what you think of the axe mask and how you would have made it. Um, most of the ones I do are prototypes. So I'll make one like this, then kind of figure out all the flaws in it. Then I'll move on to making it in a different way. So I'm reasonably happy with the way it turned out. There are a couple of mistakes in it, some tool marks, which are not ideal. With a new design, sometimes you've just got to build it see what the flaws are. And then the second one is gonna be much better just through iteration. So I hope you've enjoyed having a look at my favorite axes and the build of the ax mask. And until next time, take care. And as always, thank you very much for watching. If you like my videos, leave me a comment, maybe a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe.